Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another screencast lecture. Today is going to be energy transformations. The topic for today is the form of energy and energy transformation. So how certain forms of energy can become other forms of energy. Let's get started. We know that there are two types of energy. They are potential and kinetic. Potential and kinetic energy can be found in many different forms, however. For example, potential energy has an example of gravitational potential energy. That's the, uh, that's the energy of position, so the higher you have the object, the further it can fall down and far faster it can fall. So the higher the object is, the greater the gravitational potential energy. The more massive the object is, the greater the gravitational potential energy. Elastic potential energy. When you compress or stretch something, a uh, rope, a spring, a, uh, a rubber band. Everything has a certain amount of elasticity to it. Then the further you stretch the object, the greater the amount of greater amount of elastic energy potential it will have. Chemical energy, that's the energy stored in molecules. When the molecules are broken down, like when you eat food, energy is going to be released. So it will break down into smaller parts like for example this is hydrogen gas if you burn hydrogen gas it will explode and give off heat energy and that that heat energy came from the stored chemical energy in the bonds of the hydrogen gas Ener uh, energizer batteries the batteries are a form of chemical energy stored with acid and metals and finally nuclear potential energy that's the energy that's stored in the atoms itself this is not really something that we're going to be able to demonstrate in class, but if you break apart the nucleus of an atom, it will release a tremendous amount of energy. That's potential energy, nuclear potential energy. Kinetic energy forms can be found in uh, light energy. Sometimes this is called radiant energy. So if you think of something like a flashlight or a laser, that could be light or radiant energy. could be some uh, other form of light, like ultraviolet, that you can't see. The, uh, another form of kinetic energy is heat energy, so thermal energy could be another form of kinetic energy. Electrical energy is a form of kinetic energy. It's energy of action. This is electrons moving from place to place, electrical energy. And finally, mechanical energy. Sometimes it's known simply as kinetic energy or it could be known as motion energy. So if you think of a machine moving, if you think of uh, your arm bending, that's mechanical energy. You're turning a, a pencil sharpener, mechanical energy. Examples of energy transformations. Let's think about, first of all, let's think about gasoline. What form of potential energy is gasoline? Well, of course, you do have some gravitational potential energy. So if the gasoline can is sitting up on a shelf, you could knock the gasoline can over and it could fall to the ground. But that's obviously not the main purpose of having a can of gasoline. The, the uh, gasoline is a form of chemical potential energy. So the bonds of the gasoline, they can be broken and energy will be released when the gasoline is burned. So if I take a uh, match and I put it to the gasoline vapors, what energy change can occur? In other words, what forms of kinetic energy will be released? So we start with chemical energy. What forms of action energy will be released from a can of gasoline meeting a match? Well, one of the things you should see, you should see a big flash of light. So that would be radiant energy. And also, if you are nearby, you should hear... Uh, some uh, some noise, you should hear an explosion. That could be a form of mechanical energy, that sound. And then, of course, you would also feel heat or thermal energy. The chemical energy has transformed into other forms. It was chemical energy. Now we have light energy, we have heat energy, and we have sound energy, mechanical energy. That's why you don't smoke. Well, you shouldn't smoke anyways, but certainly don't want to smoke while you're pumping gasoline or near open flames. If there's a car accident, you don't want to be sitting around and, hey, it's dark. Let's light a match and see what's going on here. Not the right time for it. Here are some examples of light energy. Take a look. Here are some examples of thermal or heat energy. Some examples of electrical energy. And examples of mechanical energy. You may recall the law of conservation of energy. That's where that energy is neither created nor destroyed. You start with a certain amount of energy. You start with 100 units of potential energy. You should end with 100 units of kinetic energy of some way, shape, or another. Energy is neither created nor destroyed by ordinary means. What's going to happen 
is that energy is not created, is not destroyed, but it's going to change. What happens to the energy when you use it? Where does it go? It's going to change its form. During an energy change, the energy is not destroyed. The energy will just change form. That's that's what I would like you to write right there. Let's take a look at some specific examples. Let's describe the energy transformations here that you see. You have a big wind turbine. The wind blows and spins the turbine. The turbine moves a magnet inside a, a spool of wire. That's the generator. So we have the wind blowing. That's mechanical energy. The turbine spinning. That's a form of mechanical energy. And the generator moving is going to produce electrical energy. So a wind turbine is going to be mechanical to electrical. Let's take a look at any other energy transformation. Let's take a think about an electric heater. What could be the energy transformations for electric heater? Well just like sometimes if you're gonna do a maze, sometimes it's easier to start at the finish and work your way back to the start. The uh, same thing could be true about trying to figure out energy transformations. If you think about the end result, think about the end result of an electric heater, what is the purpose of that electric heater? Well, it's probably going to give off some light. That's true. That's usually probably not the main purpose of the electric heater. Obviously, the main purpose of the electric heater should be to create heat. And so heat would be a form of thermal energy. And the uh, thermal energy is produced by electrical energy. So le electric current is moving through the uh, heater and is producing thermal heat or heat energy. Another one, you have a calculator. Most calculators now work by solar power. And this is kind of a neat energy transformation. You have radiant energy from the sun. You have light energy from the sun. It goes into the solar panel, and that produces directly electrical energy. This is the one way that electrical energy can be produced without having some sort of generator. Uh, pretty much every other way to make electricity, you have to have some sort of generator. This is uh, one way you don't have to. So this is a transfer directly from radiant energy to electrical energy. Pretty cool. Here's another energy transformation. Think about uh, rubbing these sticks together. What's going on? Well, first of all, the rubbing the sticks together, that's going to be mechanical energy. And that's going to make heat. That's going to make thermal energy. So you're going from mechanical energy to thermal energy. Try to answer these energy transformations. This is going to be light energy. And through photosynthesis, the plant will change light energy into and store it as chemical energy. Electrical energy, that electrical energy will heat up the electric stove and create thermal energy. Food is a form of potential energy. It's stored chemical energy and that that person could eat that chemical energy and use the chemical energy to pedal his bicycle that's a form of mechanical energy gasoline that kind of looks like a refrigerator um, gasoline is a we already talked about this one it's a form of potential energy it is chemical energy and that chemical energy can be burnt and cause the car to be able to move which would be mechanical energy well, that's all we got for today. Uh, we'll uh, take a look at some examples in class, and we'll catch you next time. See ya. You want to say goodbye? Okay, yesterday was Pokemon's 20th birthday. And I won two times. Yes, we played Pokemon yesterday for the first time ever. And they crushed us. Yeah, we lost pretty bad to this uh, Pokemon guy. So, anyways, have a good time. We'll see you next time on Screencast Lectures. Be careful, kids. Bye, and you got to catch them on. <laughs> see ya.